Hello everyone, I'm Priyadarshni Mahara, faculty at the Department of Bodhis Studies, University of Delhi. Today, I'm going to discuss with you module number 36, which is titled Dependent Origination. And this module belongs to paper number 11 of Philosophy of Buddhism. Now, when we look at the title, it says Dependent Origination. So, dependent origination is termed in Pali as Pratichya Samupad and in Sanskrit as Pratitya Samutpad. Before we get into what dependent origination is, let us see this particular word Pratichya Samupad. What does this stand for or how it is derived? The term Pratichya Samupad in this term, samupad means the arising of something. Upad means arising. Now, patich means because of or as a result of something. Therefore, the compound term patich samupad means arising of something as a result of a cause or causes. So here when we say arising of something, it points out to Duk. In brief, this is called dependent origination or dependent arising. Dependent on ignorance, conceptions arise. Dependent on conceptions, consciousness arises. So we have 12 links which are given rise to by the pre previous link or the predecessor. So, when we talk about dependent origination, as we've talked earlier about the four noble truths, it all, when we talk about dependent origination, the doctrine of dependent arising also comes out the four noble truth. It can be placed in the notion of the first noble truth, which talks about suffering. The same dependent arising can be placed in the second noble truth which talks about causes of suffering. And the same noble truth or the same dependent arising can be placed in the third noble truth which talks about the cessation of suffering. Also, this dependent arising can be placed in the path that leads to the cessation of suffering. So if you see then there is a strong relation between the noble truths and dependent arising. Now let us see what dependent arising means. Firstly it constitutes of 12 links. Dependent on ignorance conceptions arise. Dependent on conceptions consciousness arises. Dependent on consciousness, mentality and materiality arises. Dependent on mentality and materiality, the six internal senses or bases arise. Dependent on the six internal bases, contact occurs. Dependent on contact, feeling arises. Dependent on feeling, Craving arises. Dependent on craving, attachment arises. Dependent on attachment, there is existence. Dependent on existence, rebirth takes place. Dependent on rebirth, old age, death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, unhappiness and disappear arises. Thus, this is the arising of whole mass of Dukh. This is called dependent origination. So you see when you look at these categories, the causes and effects, they all lead to the aggregation of what we call suffering or Dukh. Now, when we get into all these factors, we begin with, there are 12 factors, so we begin with the first factor, which is called avidja. 
अविद्या और अविद्या इज अनोइंग और इग्नोरेंस ऑफ दुख इट कॉजेस इट्स सिजेशन एंड द वे लीडिंग टू द सिजेशन द फोर नोबल ट्रूथ एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू अविदर नॉट नोइंग वॉट वेंट बिफोर द पास्ट वॉट कम्स आफ्टर द फ्यूचर वॉट came both before and after the past and the future and the principle of dependent origination ignorance is believing that this very self will be reborn in various states due to particular actions that after death there is nothing that life is a random process in which good and evil actions bear no fruit that simply by adhering to a certain group one will automatically be saved that material wealth will provide true happiness so this is what we mean when we say ignorance or avidya when we talk about ignorance we see that there are certain things which we are ignorant about when we look into dependent origination by ignorance we pointing out to the permanence or the impermanence when we mistake the impermanent to be permanent when we mistake the unconditioned uncondi- to be unconditioned this is what we are ignored of and this leads to suffering in life coming to the next factor it is called sankhar or volitional impulses bodily formation or intentional actions verbal formations or intentional speech mental formations or thoughts volitional impulses constitute thinking and intending in accordance with those beliefs considering and planning actions in accordance with those intentions some good some bad and some neutral when we talk about volitional activities these are the activities done by a person with all senses in performance intentionally done actions can be termed as volitional activities and they are grouped into good which would be wholesome bad which would be unwholesome and neutral which are neither wholesome nor unwholesome so that is what is sankhar and ignorance give rise to sankhar now sankhar or volitional activities give rise to vinyan or consciousness consciousness through ear eyes nose tongue and body and mind which includes the rebirth linking consciousness which means vinyan the six consciousnesses are included in this factor consciousness leads to the perception and awareness of sensations which will be related to particular intentions mind or consciousness is fashioned into specific qualities by intention at death the momentum of volitional impulses propelled by the law of karm induces the so fashioned relinking consciousness to take a spare of birth and level of existence appropriate to it this is known as rebirth so when we have in the beginning ignorance ignorance is giving la- rise to sankhar or volitional attitude then these volitional attitude is giving rise to consciousness or vinyan the and this consciousness arises through six factors which includes eye ear nose tongue body and mind we, then we have the six consciousnesses consciousness of perception and awareness of sensation which are related to particular intentions mind or consciousness is fashioned into specific qualities by intention we have vinyan here under 
consciousness which points out to rebirth linking consciousness as well when we are we we come to an end our life comes to an end but we are born again it is this vinyan that links one birth to another now consciousness gives rise to body and mind which is known as naam and roop and this is the fourth constituent or the link in the dependent arising naam means name or mind feeling perception intention contact attention or according to what the texts have to say the kan or of feeling perception and volition impulses and roop points out to body or materiality the four elements earth water wind and fire and all forms dependent on them so this is what we mean when we say naam and roop mind or body and materiality body and mind the process of rebirth proceeds to create a life form primed to generate more karmic actions as a result there is the roop vedana sanya and sankhar roop vedana sanya and sankhar come into existence as a result of this formation of naam and roop in their complete entity with the distinct qualities and defects endowed on them by the fashioning influence of conditions or constrained by the limitation of that particular sphere of existence be it in human animal or any other being coming to the next link we see that the fifth link of dependent arising is called salayatan or the sixth sense basis we have naam and roop naam and roop give rise to salayatan or the sixth sense basis so what are these sixth sense basis they are eye ear nose tongue body in mind the six sense bases proceed further a sentient being must have the means to communicate with its environment in order to function and develop within it thus supported by body and mind and in conformity with karmic momentum the organism proceeds to develop the six sense bases the sense organs of eye ear nose tongue body and mind so there is the development which is called salayatan or the sixth sense basis so these are developed after the containment of naam and roop after the body and the mind comes into formation the sixth factor or the link of pratiti samutpat or dependent arising is called phas phas means contact it points out to eye contact ear contact nose contact tongue contact body contact and mind contact so when we talk about phas or contact we see that they come into existence after the six sense bases have come into formation then the seventh link or the factor in dependent arising is vedana vedana means feeling now feelings can be of pleasure pain and even indifference arising from eye ear nose tongue body and mind when we look at phas which means contact of the six sense bases along with vedana which means feeling that arises after the six sense bases come in contact with their object therefore we can say the feelings or appreciation of the qualities of sense contact be of comfort which means pleasant feeling which is also termed as sukh vedana 
discomfort or painful feeling which is termed as dukh vedna or unpleasant feeling or even indifference or equanimity which means neutral feeling or upekha vedna so these are the three different types of feelings which arises when the sense objects or the sense organs come in contact with the objects in conformity with the nature of unenlightened beings the process does not stop there but goes on so when human beings the formation of nam and roop the body has come into existence along with the mind the six sense bases come into formation after the six sense bases have come into formation we see that the bases have contact with the objects which means fuss after fuss we have vedna arising which points out to different feelings of pleasure sukh vedna displeasure dukh vedna as well as neutral feelings of existence so these feelings further lead to tanha which is the eighth factor in the dependent arising tanha means craving craving for sounds craving for odor craving for taste craving for bodily sensation craving for mind objects craving for mind objects when we talk about the mind objects they are further divided into six cravings six different kinds of cravings so why do you think this craving arises now when your body has come into existence your sensations or the sense faculties have also been formulated after the sense faculties have been formulated there's a contact between the object and the sense faculties through the contact between the object and the sense faculties there arises different types of feelings sometimes you might like an object or you might feel the feeling of pleasure looking at a particular object seeing or hearing a particular object smelling a particular object tasting a particular object or thinking or touching a particular object so these feelings arise and the same can be for those objects which give rise to the feeling of displeasure in you or for that matter there would be certain objects for which you would not have any feeling and those are the neutral objects now sometimes when you see the objects that give pleasure in you or that bring out the pleasure in you are more wanted you have a craving for those objects so cravings can be comfortable feelings tend to produce liking and enjoyment desire for and seeking after more of the same for the stressful feeling or discomfort there is displeasure a desire to destroy or get rid of them neutral feeling in this context is considered to be a subtle form of pleasant feeling because it does not disturb the mind and invokes a certain amount of compliance so when we talk about the neutral feelings here neutral feelings do not represent any feeling rather they are they lean more towards the subtle form of pleasant feeling why because they do not disturb the mind and in do not invoke a certain amount of uncompliance rather they invoke a certain amount of compliance now the ninth factor that comes in the link of pratitya samutpad is called upadar which means clinging to sense objects so that is sight sound odor taste and bodily sensation clinging on to these sense objects is known as upadar 
clinging to views, clinging to rules and practices, clinging to concepts of self. Clinging is a desire that intensifies and it becomes a holding on to or clinging to the object in question. As long as an object is yet untained, attained, there is craving. As soon as the object is attained, it is held fast by clinging. This refers not only to sense objects, but also to ideas and views, modes of practice or techniques, and the feeling of self. Clinging further gives rise to bhav, which means becoming. The conditions which lead to birth also realms of existence. The sense realm, the realm of form, the realm of formless. When we talk about rup, arup and bhav, this is what we are pointing out to. So this becoming is the intention and deliberate action to produce and control things in accordance with the directives of clinging, leading to further rotation of the whole process of behavior. Being good karma, bad karma or neutral karma, depending on the qualities of craving and clinging, which condition them. For example, let us see an example here. One who desires to go to heaven will do those things which he or she believes will lead to rebirth in heaven, thus laying the groundwork for the five khand to appear in the realm appropriate to those actions. With the process of certain karm thus in full swing, one link give rise to the next. So we have bhav or becoming and that gives rise to jati. Now jati is birth, the arising of khan and the sense basis. When we talk about bhav, bhav is the intention or the desire to be born again and jati takes the formation of aggregates of khan as well as the sense basis in form of birth. The appearance or arising of things. Dependent origination cycle in one mind moment. Birth is the beginning with the relinking consciousness which we've already talked about which means vinyan and this is endowed with features contingent on it on its karmic momentum. So when we have done certain karmic actions then we have to wait for the resultant or karmic vipak. Vipak is known as resultant. So if you have done certain karmic actions or performed certain actions in your previous life, then you are born again along with vinyan, which is the rebirth linking consciousness into this birth. Now, when you are performing certain actions in this birth, you might get the repercussion or the resultant in this birth itself. Otherwise, you will have to take a next birth with along with many other factors and there you will have the resultant of your actions which you are performing in your present birth. The five skand arise in a new life, comprising name and form, the six sense bases, contact, and feeling. Then the twelfth factor is Jara Maran, aging and death. Jara, the aging process, the fading of the faculties, and Maran, the breaking up of the Khan, the dissolution of the life principle, which means death. Alternatively, the dissipation and dissolution of the phenomena. Now this aging and death also points out to the decay and dissolution of the series of conscious life. For the unenlightened beings, these things are constantly threatening life in either overt or convert, co covert ways. Therefore, in the life of the unenlightened being, 
old age and death inevitably bring with them sorrow in different different forms we have lamentation dukh or pain which means dhomanas grief and up upayas disappear which all in all can be summed up as simply suffering so this whole cycle of pratiti samutpad points out to suffering the movement from ignorance till death and decay leads to suffer and this is not the end the death and decay just do not bring an end to the cycle of rebirth birth and rebirth we have in the final words of the principle of dependent origination thus is the arising of this whole mass of suffering however as the principle of dependent origination functions as a cycle it does not stop there the last factor becomes a crucial link in further continuation of the cycle of birth and rebirth the cycle of dependent origination is also known as the wheel of becoming which is termed as bhav chakra or wheel of samsara this model covers three lifetimes ignorance and violational impulses are in one lifetime consciousness to becoming are in second lifetime while birth and aging and death with sorrow lamentation and so on occur in a third taking the middle life span as the present one we can divide three life periods with the entire 12 links of dependent origination into three time periods and what are these three time periods the past life in which we have ignorance and violational impulses then we have the present life in which we place consciousness body and mind sense bases contact feeling craving clinging and becoming then in the third life which is the future life we have birth aging and death which is endowed with sorrow lamentation pain grief and despair this is how life arises exists and continues if we take this formula in its reverse order we come to the cessation of the process when we look at the cycle of dependent origination when we look about at these 12 links we see that a cycle or a circle does not have a beginning can you point out to a beginning in a circle it just starts and just moves on and on so you cannot say that this is the beginning if you cannot say that this is the beginning of the circle then how do we place ignorance or avidya to be the first of the 12 links of dependent origination do you have an answer to that or did you even think about that question that if it is a circle then how can we place only avidya or ignorance to be the first cause why not naam roop or sense spaces or coming into existence which is bhav or birth this is because due to ignorance we do not know which is the first cause and that is the reason we place ignorance or avidya on the top to be the first cause of existence when we look at this whole circle of dependent origination we see that if we move in clockwise direction in this cycle of dependent arising which is also known as anulom then we are stuck in the suffering of human existence now in the same circle if we start to move in a reverse order which is known as patilom 
we destroy go on destroying all these factors that that entrap us in the phenomenal existence of suffering and there is a point when we remove ignorance and we reach the state of the absolute and that is the state of the ultimate liberation called nirvana through the complete cessation of ignorance violational activities or kar karmic formations come to an end through the cessation of violational activities consciousness ceases through the cessation of birth decay death sorrow etc cease it should be clearly remembered that each of these factor is conditioned which means pratitya samutpad as well as conditioning therefore they all are relative interdependent and interconnected and nothing is absolute or independent hence no first cause is accepted as we have seen earlier condition genesis should be considered as a circle and not as a breakage link and this is what is when we talk about pratitya samutpad or dependent arising this points out to the reality of phenomenal existence which is based on a causal and effect link when there is a cause there is an effect if we remove the effect the cause also gets diminished and this is the whole idea of dependent origination to bring you to the reality of phenomenal existence thank you